Okay, so you want to know how to find a business to buy, right? If you're thinking about starting a business through acquisition, the first question that probably pops into your mind is, where the hell do I find a business to buy? Most people assume the only way to buy a business is by searching through listings or buying expensive businesses from wealthy owners, but that's not always the case. Today, I am going to give you a step-by-step -step framework you can follow to find the right business for you. Whether you're a first-time buyer or someone with experience, this video will give you all the actionable steps to move forward. So grab a notebook, a pen, and let's get right into it. The first step in finding the right business is figuring out what fits your skills and interests. You don't need to be passionate about the business. It's more important to have the skill to run it successfully. Let me tell you about a business I purchased where I had zero passion. It was a trucking company. Now, here's the funny part. I absolutely hate driving. I don't even enjoy driving my own car, but I came across this opportunity through my side hustle as a bookkeeper. And by the way, bookkeeping is a great side hustle, especially if you have great accounting skills and know how to track cash flows. But I digress. So moving forward, I was working with someone who ran a trucking business and I noticed she was making seven to eight thousand dollars a week paying her driver 25 percent of what she earned. She was interested in selling this business because she was paying me to do her bookkeeping, paying her driver 25 percent and paying a factoring company. What a factoring company is typically in the trucking industry, they take about 30 days to pay you for whatever loads you've done. So oftentimes, if you want your money sooner, you would go to a factoring company who would take 5% off the top and then pay you on that invoice within 24 to 48 hours. So she was paying this factoring company 5% and paying a dispatcher about $1,000 a week. I thought to myself, I can do this and likely more efficiently. So I set up a company, we registered it with the FMCSA. I probably wouldn't do that going forward, but I'll talk about that in another video. We built relationships with shipping companies and brokers and booked long haul routes from Ohio to New Jersey and beyond. Even though I wasn't passionate about trucking, I don't have a CDL. I don't know how to drive a truck. I have barely even been inside any of my trucks. My business still succeed. And it even led to a $10 million Amazon contract, which I speak about a lot on my channel. This experience proved that you don't need passion to succeed. You need the right strategy and execution. Focus on monetizing your skills and passion will come later after you've built financial stability within your business. So identifying your skills and interests is your first step. Ask yourself, what skills do I have? What are my interests? What am I good at that could be monetized? This is important because you'll have the highest chance of success if your business aligns with your skills. Passion isn't essential in the beginning. You don't need to be in love with the business to succeed. Skill matters more. I've bought businesses I wasn't particularly passionate about, like I mentioned earlier, but I was able to run them effectively because I had the skill. On the other hand, I've also tried businesses I loved but lacked the necessary skills, and those were harder to manage until I leveled up my knowledge. Brainstorm your skills and your interests. Create two distinct lists your current skills and your personal interests. Look for overlaps in the two. You can even draw a Venn diagram to see where your skills and interests align. Here are some examples, right? So think about it this way. Customer service is your skill. You have an interest in fashion. Consider buying a retail boutique. Skill, baking, interest, writing. Start a blog or a subscription box for baked goods. Skill, truck driving, interest, travel. Buy a logistics company or a trucking company. This step will help you narrow down the type of business that suits you the best. Once you have clarity on the kind of business you want, the next step is to leverage your network. Ask yourself, who do I know in this industry? When I left my corporate job, I realized that most of my friends and colleagues weren't business owners. So I had to start from zero. I joined local chambers of commerce, attended conferences, and participated in a ton of Facebook groups. I asked questions, made connections, and engaged with people who were running the types of businesses I was interested in. That's how I gradually built the network I needed to find deals and learn more about the different industries I wanted to invest in. You can also ask yourself, do I know suppliers, business owners, or service providers connected to this type of business? Let's say you want to buy a salon. You can reach out to salon owners in your area, hair product suppliers, people who rent spaces in salons, or if you're considering buying a restaurant, you might want to know, do I know any food suppliers or vendors, restaurant owners, local chefs? 
even if someone isn't directly connected to the business, they might know someone adjacent to the industry. Reach out and ask the question. What if you don't have a network? If your network is limited, just do what I did. Join your local chamber of commerce. You'll meet other business owners and get connected with industry events. You can also join Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups in your niche. These are filled with business owners and entrepreneurs sharing advice. Attending conferences and trade shows is a great place to meet people in the industry you're exploring. In addition to that, you need to be watching YouTube videos, reading books on your target business or industry. Self-education will be key. The more conversations you have and the more connections you make, the easier it will be to find the right business opportunity. The next thing you'll want to do is make sure you understand the difference between an on-market deal and an off-market deal. Now that you've narrowed down the kind of business you're interested in and have a network to leverage, it's time to start your search. There are two ways to do this. You can look at on-market deals. These are businesses that are publicly listed for sale. Websites like Biz by Sell, businessforsale.com, LoopNet, which includes some businesses that come with real estate. The challenge with these on-market deals is that they tend to have more competition. Once they are listed, you're competing with everyone who sees the same opportunity. On the flip side, there are off-market deals. These are businesses not actively listed for sale. To find off-market deals, you'll need to network directly with business owners, visit local businesses that have been around for years, introduce yourself, build relationships, and express interest in taking over the business if they ever decide to sell. Off-market deals are often better because you face less competition. However, they require more effort and patience. For example, I purchased a $300,000 laundromat. It was an on-market deal, but I knew exactly what I was looking for. I had $300,000 in cash, so I went looking for laundromats within that price range. While it worked out, in hindsight, I realized that I limited myself by only focusing on my cash budget. If I knew what I knew now, I would have explored creative financing options to aim for a larger deal. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, well, how do I pay for this business, right? You might fall into two different scenarios. You have the money, or you don't have enough money, or maybe you have no money. But this is where creative financing comes into play. Either way, the cash amount doesn't matter. You can buy a multi-million dollar business and come out of pocket for zero dollars, or you can buy a few hundred thousand dollar business and come out of pocket a few hundred thousand dollars, right? The cost of the deal should not limit the type of business you want to buy. And here's an example. The $300,000 laundromat that I purchased, I bought this business in cash because traditional lenders wouldn't finance it. Why? It didn't have solid tax returns that were profitable or documented cash flow. Whereas I purchased a $2 million business and I financed this deal using bank financing and seller financing, and I came out of pocket with zero dollars. In fact, I also structured this loan to include working capital, giving me extra cash to operate the business in the first few months. The takeaway here is bigger deals aren't always harder to finance. With the right strategy, you can get creative and structured deals that work in your favor. Now, what type of red flags and due diligence should you look out for when you see a deal? Because you won't close on every deal. One of the things that I look out for is how involved is the current business owner. If the owner is heavily involved in the day-to-day -day operations, you'll need to either step into that role or hire someone to do it, both of which can eat into profits. I also have a due diligence checklist that I use for every acquisition. Here are a few questions that I just always ask. Some of them are, how long has the business been operating? Do you have long-term contracts with customers or vendors? Are there any lawsuits or liens on the business assets? What's the relationships with the landlord or when does the lease expire? If you're interested, let me know and I'll share my full checklist. These questions, you know, you should tailor them to the type of business you are looking to buy, but I can create a video on a full list of questions you can ask. Once you've implemented this framework, it's time to work your plan. Keep planting seeds and talking to people. Share your goals with others. Don't try to keep your plans a secret. The more people know what you're trying to do, the more likely you are to find opportunities. Finding the right business takes time. It's not going to happen overnight, but if you follow this framework, you'll be in a great position to buy businesses that fit your skills, interests, and finance. Remember, identifying your skills and your interests, leveraging your network, and building one if you have to searching both on market and off market deals and do not stress about financing or the amount of cash is going to cost get creative and explore your options the most important thing is to stay persistent keep networking keep learning and don't be afraid to reach out to business owners opportunities will come just be ready when they do if you have any questions drop them in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer them all i'll see you guys in the next video